We are going to um, kick off uh, our day. Uh, we've got a wonderful speaker coming up here uh, onto the stage. Um, the keynote topic is our report on commercial fishing uh, was delivered in 2021. What happened next? Juliet Gerard uh, has been appointed, was appointed in 2018 uh, as the Prime Minister's Chief Science Advisor. She has worked from a base of four founding principles, rigour, inclusivity, transparency and accessibility. She has supported the science and the science advisor community to provide advice to the Prime Minister, ministers and the public on a wide range of topics, including advice on the Christchurch Mosque shootings, the response to Picardy, White Island, the cannabis referendum, rheumatic fever and the COVID-19 pandemic. The office has released three major reports, including the future of commercial fishing in Aotearoa, New Zealand, Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for Juliet. Hi there, my Juliet. Kia ora koutou, na mehi nui. Um, delighted to be here finally. It's been so good, end of last year and beginning of this year, to get back out chatting to people. Um, I'm not a fan of Zoom, so it's just lovely to be in rooms full of real people. Um, we're running a little bit late, so I'll try and keep the slides short to leave some time for questions, maybe. So I thought I'd talk about this report, which many of you helped write. So first up, a huge thank you for all your contributions to that. Um, it's an interesting role mine. You will have heard in the introduction that we advise on many things about which in the office we know little. Um, so finding ways to write reports, to pull experts together, to find mechanisms to synthesize that advice has been one of the most interesting parts of the last five years. And I think it's fair to say this was the one where we learned the most because it was the most challenging. There's two types of advice, I guess, fundamentally. There's proactive advice where something happens or we think something's happened and we can put our hand up and say, Prime Minister, government, you should really do something about this. And then there's commissioned advice. And the, the latter is more successful in general because it means that the advice is sought and that the evidence is being requested just ahead of the policy agenda. And so for other projects than this one, um, we slotted in quite nicely just ahead of the policy agenda. But for this project, it was rather different because there were several policy agendas and they weren't necessarily aligned. Um, so we've learnt a lot going through the different processes about when advice works and when it doesn't. Um, and we certainly learnt a lot with this one. So the project scope for this project was set not, not by me, but by um, the Prime Minister, previous Prime Minister and various officials. Um, so the scope was commercial fisheries. And out of scope were all the things that many people in this room wanted to change, um, which was not a happy coincidence. Um, there's a certain amount you can do about that in terms of proactive advice, and there's a certain amount you can't in terms of following the instructions. So um, we stretched the bounds of that scope significantly, as I'll talk about, um, but we tried to keep the detailed recommendations in scope so that we could make some progress um, within the bounds, limited bounds, of um, what needed to be done. So the project process we based on less fishy experience. So previously to this project, our major project had been on plastics. And on, when I compare the two projects, the main difference between the two topics is social license. So for plastics, the industry were not fully aligned with NGOs but there was a shared acceptance that we had a massive problem, like H3 billion tons of plastic in the ocean, or whatever it is, all those lovely sound bites we throw out, more plastic than fish by 2050. Um, everyone accepted that we needed to do something to solve it, and everyone um, was happy to read like really early drafts of stuff and help do the actual thinking and writing and bring it all together. Um, there was also a moment in government when the Green Party were in government 
where waste was really high on the agenda. And so we were feeding directly into that policy agenda and there was a thirst for the information from, from everyone actually. Um, so that project which kicked off in 2019 we did a big launch. There were immediate announcements because MFE were working alongside us, looking at the evidence and saying, yep, we can, we can announce some things. These are in line with our policy direction. We need this evidence behind them. Um, you will have noticed even this week, announcements are still coming through. So even with huge social license, that process is still pretty slow. There was a pandemic in the way, but still, 2019 to 2023 to announce the waste strategy is pretty slow. But you could see that there was social license. We were making a difference. People had slightly different priorities, but we were all on the same page. That was not true in the, the fishing project. Um, and so our panel, in terms of iterative feedback being fed in, was great. Um, some members of the panel in the room, and I thank them hugely. Um, but the wider reference group that we set up, so we have this panel and then we let anybody have a look at the drafts and, and go in and type in the document, that was not the best method for this group of people. Um, I will rethink how we do another project like this. However, we did get an astonishing amount of feedback for which we were really grateful. So the passion was clear. Um, the tensions were clear, but we managed to accumulate such a huge amount of information. So I've brought some, the, this is the short version of the report. They're on a desk somewhere in the, the, the downstairs room. I've also brought some of the long versions of the report and that long report would not have been as rich had we not had this really open process where anyone could throw in their reckons. So here is my panel of heroes. Um, thank you to the people in the room. We tried really hard to create a group of people with different views, strongly held, um, but that could really thrash out a way forward within the confines of our scope and really try and put forward some recommendations that could make a difference in the short term rather than waiting for a big long plan. Um, we always try in our projects not to get stuck in our ivory tower, that, that's literally in the clock tower, that photo of the panel. Um, so we got out on boats, I went to the Chathams, we went to the fish factories, I filleted a fish at Tally's. Um, some poor person will have got a very small fillet in a bag because they let it go down the line and I wouldn't recommend the one that I put there. But we did our best to really understand all aspects of the industry. Um, this is my, my summary picture of the feedback we got on the scope of the project, which I've, I've just gone over. Um, if you search really angry fish, that's the best image that you get. Um, I probably don't need to tell you guys that because you probably know more about fish than I do. So what we did to try and answer this heartfelt cry to do more than we'd been asked to do was career out of scope and very explicitly say the first three recommendations of our report are out of scope. But we don't think that without this context, the in-scope recommendations in the final four themes are going to work. So um, that comes under the bit about proactive advice, I guess. We said, here's, here's what you asked us to do, but wait, there's more. Um, but we kept our recommendations to within the confines of the Fisheries Act in order that the minister had those levers to pull immediately to make a difference and stick to the rules. I'm sure many of you in the room would have liked to have gone further. And when I talked at um, the See the Future conference in Nelson, there's many in that room that wanted us to not go as far as we did. And so I hope we found a balance, but aware in this arena, it's hard to please all of the people all of the time. So recommendations one to three, and I won't go into them in detail, but the first one, and probably the most important one, was that the panel felt very strongly that you could do all the science you liked in this area, but nothing was gonna work unless we had leadership across the whole of the ocean. So you guys know this, I don't need to tell you this. Um, you've got people talking about MPAs, you've got people talking about the Fisheries Act, you've got people talking about the RMA, you've got all these conversations going on, not parallel. Um, and we needed some way of strengthening that leadership. Now that's really not science advice. So I texted the PM at some point during the process and said, look, you've given me this project, the panel really is going out of scope and it's also going out of science advice. You comfortable getting these recommendations? And she was. And so I think the most useful thing we may have done, um, time will tell, is to 
expand the fisheries portfolio to Minister of Oceans and Fisheries, and I understand that the minister that received our report, still minister today, um, talked to you a couple of days ago. Um, so we just do the science advice, but we were pretty happy that we managed to nudge that conversation to get something more holistic. Um, and also fair to say, I've just been talking to Dan, and I'm not going to speak to Dan's expertise. It's mine. It's not mine. Um, but most of the stuff we wrote at the beginning has huge resonance with views from Teo Māori. The, the fact that you have to look at the whole thing, that you can't be reductionist. Um, and just while there isn't a huge amount of um, Mātauranga Māori in the report, for a few reasons, actually, uh, there's a resonance, I hope, with Teo Māori in that we're saying, you can't just do this, you can't just do that, you can't just do the other, you have to look at the whole ocean. So I was pretty pleased that the report was received and even though we were in the middle of a pandemic, there were seven cabinet papers um, that came out in relatively short order. Um, obviously, our piece of work was not the only piece of work that was happening at the time. We tried not to tread on the toes of the other work, but cross-reference. So obviously the Hauraki Gulf stuff was also happening, the sea change strategy, um, which was in the news again yesterday, I saw. Um, but we had one of those papers that was explicitly an initial response to our report on commercial fishing. And I guess the last four themes of our report pretty much say what it says at the top of that slide. We can achieve a lot within the Fisheries Act. We historically have not because the levers around the environment that the minister could have pulled were not pulled. And we hoped that with the leadership of the oceans rather than just the fisheries, you could incentivize, and in my forward, I specifically challenged the minister to use those levers to make a difference in the short term. To do any of that, I think we needed buy-in from commercial fishers. So I know that there was tension around the membership of the panel. I personally am incredibly grateful and very pleased that Craig Ellison agreed to co-chair it with me because I didn't think that we could really get inside and make recommendations to the industry without having that voice at the table. I know there are other views, there are other ways we could have gone forward, but Craig was very excited about the possibilities of the science, and without Craig, we couldn't have got into the rooms that we got, understood the context that we needed to, and tried to um, make some progress in a difficult industry. Um, and also the panel, I think, were incredibly collegial and incredibly hardworking and helped us really pass all the um, challenging feedback. And it was a, a great exercise in teamwork at a difficult time because we we're in the middle of COVID. So recommendations four to seven, um, they're long and detailed. And again, I've left some reports there. You're welcome to read it. And it's all on the web, both in report form and in dip in way like website form. Everyone agrees we need better regulatory tools. They, they might not quite disagree on, on where you tweak them, but there's a consensus there. So we, we dug into that. The data challenge is huge, and that is actually where the PM started when she asked me to do this report. She's like, surely you scientists can get better data. Um, I'm sure we can if we're resourced to do so. Um, so we unpack lots of stuff about the problems with data, the problems with the uncertainty, the fact that, as I always say, my mother always told me there were plenty of fish in the sea, but it seems there aren't quite as many as she thought. Um, and we really don't know how to count them. I mean, it's that simple at the end of the day, isn't it? Um, so that, that we need better data. We need to use the data we've got better, and we need to express the uncertainty better. And huge debate. I must have spent days of my life trying to work out whether we were going to say EBM or EAFM. We, we, we went with EAFM simply because we were within the confines of the Fisheries Act and the FM seemed relevant, but let's not go there again. I've, I've, I get the debate and I get that the ecosystem is the primary thing. Um, and I hope that there are enough fishers out there, especially the small fishers, not the big ones, um, that really understand that, that we need to be EB in order to FM. And finally, maybe sticking to our knitting, um, research and innovation needs to be maximized. So loads of brilliant ideas, very few at scale. And um, uh, none of that will work unless we get the context right, the framework right, and the settings right. But if we can get that right, there's so much scope for research and innovation. And your work obviously was really highlighted um, as we went through these case studies. 
So just to pull up a few things on each of these detailed themes, extremely complex regulatory challenge. We hope integrated leadership helps, but it will only help if it integrates. And we highlighted the agencies that we think need to work together. Data platform desperately needed. Um, just how little we know and how crucial those error bars are around the decision points on things like soft limits um, really just emphasize how data-driven, evidence-based decisions is weakened. Um, and we really made the point that just because we don't have accurate data doesn't mean we shouldn't act. And we need all parties at the table. So we heard so many stories of scientists turning up with data that wasn't quite in the right format or the right form and, and, and a, a bigger understanding of how everyone needs to pull their data and make it interoperable so that everybody can access it for commercial, social, and environmental decisions really came out strongly. So EAFM, sorry, it's not EBM. Um, I think we can move a long way within that framework. I was intrigued by section 9C of the Fisheries Act that talks about habitats of particular significance for fisheries management, which are surely habitats of particular significance for everybody. And, and, and let's save those while we're solving the bigger problem of um, protecting the rest of the ocean. And finally, the innovation piece. We, we looked at fantastic innovations and we heard passionately that you couldn't just fund innovation um, as an excuse for not solving the settings around regulation of the ocean. So we hear you, but we think that um, the innovation is still going to be useful. And the final point I'll make is that everything's local, right? So we, we're calling for a bold strategic action plan. We need national action to drive that. But there isn't a one-size-fits-all for any part of the environment, and perhaps more so than anywhere in the ocean. So place-based action, understanding the history of the, the local place, the matoranga of the local harbours, was clearly absolutely crucial. And understanding all the other pressures on those places, also crucial. So we spent a whole chapter in the opening of the report talking about all the different cumulative effects that are challenging the ocean, as well as fishing. I don't think there was much contention on this slide. So we got a formal government response to the report, which is good. It's available on the MPI website, if you haven't seen it. They arranged it in eight themes rather than seven. I'm not sure why. Yep, it was slow. Um, governments do work slowly, but in this case, I think they work carefully and thoughtfully and tried to work out what they could do um, within the confines of our uh, recommendations. And they were all agreed, agreed with intent or agreed in part, which is pretty much the same as the plastics one, actually, in terms of the wording. But I think the level of enthusiasm is kind of different in the two. Um, in the two reports and uh, the plastics one we got in the speech from the throne from the governor general as we're going to implement them all um, whereas there wasn't the same momentum behind this one but i've given myself a small happy fish to um to offset the angry one that i started with so we stop here right we just do the advice um and we're off doing food waste at the moment and a couple of other topics um, but I was heartened to be asked to go and talk to the fisheries ITP, Industry Transformation Panel, and see that they all had a copy, only the short one, not the long one. I sent them a couple of long ones. Um, and also that there's some overlap between the people on our panel and um, the people on the ITP. So Craig, in particular, who co-chaired it. Um, I don't know how that process will go, that's not a process that we get involved with. Uh, we don't do implementation, but we have an open door, and um, if people want to connect, they will. I would love to know how well connected you guys are to that process, and I'm more than happy to drop a hint if you're not. Um, so I'll leave it there, try and catch up some time, but very happy to take questions now or at morning tea. Hey, just um, encouraging you all, slide those up there. We've got a couple of questions here. 
Um, if you do have a question for Juliet, please uh, take the opportunity uh, while it's here. You can't moan later. Kapai. Okay, so how can we get the management agencies to engage with the diversity of scientific knowledge and would it be worthwhile to disconnect fisheries research from the industry, for example? Um, yeah, thorny one. So uh, one of my favourite pieces of feedback was uh, the blood pressure readings from a scientist who tried to get some information into some of these processes. So aware that this is fraught. Um, I think what I talked about in terms of interoperability of data sets. So getting, we do need research that's not connected to the industry, no doubt about that. And we do need to separate the funding from commercial fish species and other species. But we also need to find a way to build trust so that the people doing the research outside the commercial species frame it in a way that is useful to the regulator. Um, I, I think that's a big challenge that came through. I think that's a challenge for all science, but I, I think it's particularly acute here. Um, I don't think the management agencies are unwilling to engage. They are just busy people acting within the confines of their terms of reference, and that doesn't make it easy. So we tried to nudge that one. I don't know if we made progress. We'll find out. Cool. The oceans are changing fast. Do you think this report will provide the stimulus to speed up the need to act at pace? Um, I hope so. So, who knows? It's my baby. I, I, I hope it's not too ugly and it goes off and does good. Um, one thing we do is keep lots of copies of the report and we give them to people all the time. So, like, a whole pile of copies went to Fisheries New Zealand. Um, I'm trying not to smirk. Whenever there's a new minister, I drop off new copies of the report and offer a briefing. And generally speaking, let's generalise that. So if, if we've done some work in an area and a minister gets a new portfolio, we just drop a note saying we've done this work, if you'd like a briefing. And most of them say yes. We brief all the opposition parties. Um, so Todd Muller in particular was very engaged. So every time there's a new um, opposition spokesperson, we offer to brief. So we do everything we can to say there's an evidence base here, we can connect you to people, but um, there's only so far you can push things. Yeah. Recommendation two is about an ocean strategy. Where are we at on the kaupapa? Yeah, did the Minister enlighten you on that one? Um, I, I, I think where we're at is best best to look in the response to the report. I think it's quite tempered around the strategic plan. Um, and one of the reasons that we wanted to try and pick off some doable things within the Act is because we didn't want everybody to get hung up on the plan and then wait 10 years, because um, we don't have 10 years, right? So I remember talking to Minister Sage with the plastics report, and we said we wanted a strategy, and she said, please, no strategies. And I said, why not? It was the first big report we'd done. And she said, because then we'll have to go out and consult and consult and consult, and everything will be behind the strategy. She wanted an action plan. So that's why we put strategic action plan, because we hope that there are some actions that can come in as we're going. But uh, yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a, a big announcement about a victory in that corner, sorry. Yeah. Great. Someone's used the word I've never ever seen before in my life. Good, isn't it? However, agree that data interoperability of data. What are some practical steps government are taking to integrate data and new technologies? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if Dan's been here or is around, Dan Bolger. Um, that's on his desk. I think there's an enthusiasm to do it if we can resource it. Um, so there's great data in all sorts of corners of fisheries, right? But, it, but it's not integrated. And again, this isn't fisheries. Interoperability of data sets is huge across the sector. But I, I do think maybe because there's so much attention on fishing, this is a place where, where we might get some movement. Yeah, that, those were some of the more enthusiastically endorsed recommendations, but it needs resourcing. OK, our final question. Congratulations on achieving uh, the expanded mandate to fisheries and oceans, a step in the right direction. Has it shown a demonstrable impact yet? Can you give examples? Um, I hope it has. Um, at the officials level, there's certainly better connectivity. It's been a difficult time to make real progress on anything, and progress is always slow. So can I give you a glorious example of, of a win? No. Um, but the plastics report, which I discussed in a bit of depth because I think it shows that 
even happy topics move slowly. We've only just got the waste strategy out this week, and that was done a year before. So um, I'm optimistic. A lot of it will depend on what happens with the next government, but the shadow opposition spokesperson is also Oceans and Fisheries. So I hope it's not just a, a name, name win, but actually a, a way of thinking win. Let's see. OK, that was the last question, but this is the last, last question. <laughs> Don't put any more questions, because I feel obligated to ask them. So we'll, we'll make this the last question. And if you do have any other questions, Juliet, we'll be around morning tea, and yeah, you well. can have, have a conversation there. What role do NGOs and the community groups have in mobilising change in support of your recommendations? Oh, just, just keep being activists. Um, one of the most frustrating things about my job is... Um, is wearing this hat is a huge privilege, but but you can't get angry, <laughs> and you, and you can't campaign and advocate. So it's you know the evidence, the whole evidence, and nothing but the evidence. But unless those lobby groups are out there banging the drum, it's hard to get the evidence on the table. That said, um, be good if there was some consensus around some of the recommendations that we could move forward on. So you know if you've got your your, your hard-nosed fishermen people on one side and your um, your activists on the other side and there's consensus in the middle, that's the most likely spot that we'd move forward. So it'd be great if we could find some points where everyone agrees and act. Juliet, thank you very much for your time this morning. I'm sure there's people that'll catch up with you at morning tea. Thanks.